Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. My name is Frank, and this is a Starboost update. So full disclaimer, this thing is haphazardly taped together right now. I mean, lots of duct tape held together on a tripod. It's a little short, sue me. But I wanted to get it together to kind of start seeing what it's gonna look like. And uh, damn, <laughs> it looks pretty cool actually. Uh, the reason the arms aren't attached is because there's no duct tape strong enough to keep this thing secure to that shoulder. So I didn't bother, but everything on the upper body is printed uh, it is starting to come apart in a couple spots, uh, like I said, duct tape, but it does give you a good idea of what it's going to look like. Um, the head is in a little bit of a weird position right now because of how I have it sitting back on the neck. It's being helped up with foam, but while assembling this, I did notice a lot of things that I kind of wanted to explain to you guys, and I also wanted to explain why there hasn't been a Starburst update in a while, and there won't be one for probably a little bit after this. The Mark 85 is my priority right now, and I am on, I can see the finish line, and uh, I'm almost done with this, so I'm kind of prioritizing this right now. Unfor I know I was cranking out Starboost very fast, and it honestly, it would probably be done and printed right now. Uh, I only have the thighs and the shins left. Um, I have the knees and the feet all done. Oh, sorry, I need the, the butt plate, the front of the cod plate's done, but I need the, uh, the butt plate done. But uh, I just had to take a little bit of a break from Starboost, a lot of stuff was going on. So I apologize, I am in back in full production mode. I have one more helmet being printed for something else. And then uh, I'm gonna finish the thighs and shins. I'm gonna cover this before the duct tape fails and this whole thing falls apart, which it very well might uh, soon do. If you got, hopefully you guys got your hands on the sliced up chest, uh, DO3D cut the whole chest up into nine different parts. Uh, the little vents here are one part, this little collar piece is one part, this whole hexagon section is one part, and then you have this little section that wraps all the way around uh, in two spots and then in the arms right here. And I want to talk about those little uh, armholes, but this makes printing it so much easier, especially if you don't have a, some, a big printer. I have a Max and I still didn't print this in one piece and I'll explain to you guys why, aside from being able to get optimal print orientation, because this whole chest plate came out very nicely. Um, I can hear the duct tape slowly creaking away and it's really stressing me out. Um, we'll start from the base up. These little uh, booster side hip pods. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna connect them yet. Wild Sheba spotted. Hi Maya. Yep, this is this is it. She's not happy. Yeah, I can slowly hear the duct tape ripping and creaking. So we're gonna hurry this up before this all collapses. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna connect this to, actually I think that's where it's coming from. Uh, if it's gonna be connected to the waist right here or if I'm gonna actually attach it to the legs, like the, the side of the thighs or the cod piece, I'm not sure yet. Um, it doesn't line up the best right here, so I gotta look more at the model to see where it lines up. Right here I wanna talk about though. So when they designed this, the front of the abs and the little lower back, they these were actually uh, one mesh. Um, it collides and what you can see here is I cut out a little chunk and there's that's black duct tape, it's not piece missing. Um, I cut out a little chunk to let them close up. It was a little tad that was just stopping these from meeting and I need to trim it up a bit more, but if you're trying to meet these together, that's why. It's a little tab right there and a little tab right there and you'll be able to actually close those together um, a lot better. But for the most part, it does look pretty good. Uh, it is very tight fitting. If you don't have, I have a 28, I float between a 28 to a 30 inch waist and this waist piece on me is tight. Uh, I kind of wish I had scaled it up a little bit, but I can make it work. We'll uh, we'll figure that out. Oh yeah, look at that. It's all drooping. Yeah, I got to get this thing off. Oh, there it is. Hey, so this side closed up a lot better actually, but uh, yeah, this is stressing me out. Oh my God. So actually before this comes off catastrophically, I'm going to take this off of the stand and lay it down because I am uh, I'm worried. Okay, that's much better. I feel a lot more comfortable about that. So yeah, so this all wraps around and it all gets subducted in there and then this is all part of the chest. Uh, these vents just kind of like locked in there and this is raised up a little bit. That's only coming up because of the way I have the neck in there and you can see I have the neck printed and this is actually solid. This is a uh, full PLA plus. I didn't print it in flexible material, not too dissimilar to how I did the arms uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I just don't like printing in TPU and this will look better once it's painted. 
Um, after examining the neck, and now that I've printed it and I can confirm my suspicions, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this whole top part off, here up, this whole upper, whatever section doesn't have these little holes, this is gonna go away, because on the Starboo suit, it's black. So what I was gonna do is keep all this, let this be solid, and this will be part of the chest. Maybe it'll move with some elastic band just a little. And then I'm gonna have a black morph suit on underneath this anyway. And this will give me way more range of motion than a, a, a TPU print or flexible Ninja Flex neck ever would. And you won't notice it because it's supposed to be black. So I'm gonna capitalize on the fact that parts of uh, Starboost's um, sub armor, exo armor, like whatever's under like the main plates is actually black. And I'm actually just gonna eliminate this whole top ring and it should still look just fine. Um, the neck is two pieces and it's kind of taped. It, I wish it had locked in here. I wish it like had oriented and kind of slotted in there, but really it just kind of sits on your shoulders and then this comes down on top of it. Not really the best design, but like, I mean, you really can't tell from the top. Again, it looks like armor and then you have this big booster backpack built on top of it so it's kind of like layered armor kind of concept so i, I kind of like that um this is the shoulder pad i'm probably going to have it attached up here somewhere um if not right there directly but somewhere off the booster let me pull this off all right let's sit down for a second so this is the style of star boost this is all what it looks like all nice and pretty the uh the chest the lower back the hip pod now you'll notice that if you, in, in the uh, chest, if you've looked at the files, let me tilt this, this is all one piece. The chest, this is all one piece. And if you look at from the top, the armholes are here and here. I can't get my arms into that. Like you have to fish your arms through and then spread them into those two holes. Like you go like this, it doesn't work for any normal human. Um, unless you're like really, really tiny and you can just fit into this. If you scaled it up enough to do that, this thing's gonna be big. So getting this on is actually gonna be a little bit of a problem if you leave all of this a solid hole. So there's a couple things you can do here. Um, some people, what I've seen them already do, I think it was on some halo armor, is they actually just cut this out. So this is where the backpack meets the chest, this line right here. And what they've done is they've cut this out so there isn't even a full ring here or they've cut it and fused it to the backpack so it meets, like it's a half circle that clips and meets together so you can put the front on like that and then the back on. Um, what I've also thought about doing was since this is one piece, this whole flat part right here, all the way up here to there, this is all one piece. I thought about leaving this attached to the backpack and having it actually hinge open like this. I'm not sure if that's the method I'm gonna go for. Um, I think I am just gonna cut here and here in this way I can attach the backpack and the chest together and uh, the shoulder armor will cover it anyway. The other problem I'm having is this hole is really small and my shoulders don't fit in it. And like, I don't mean like, oh my God, I'm so buff. I literally mean like where um, my chest and my back, it, it just, my arm can't come through this enough. So that puts a lot of stress on it. What I'm probably gonna do is there's a couple of steps here. There's the innermost ring and then there's this kind of layered beveled part. I'm probably just gonna Dremel all of that out because that'll give me almost an inch total in more space. And from there, I could even go to this next ring and I just gotta kind of wallow this out and make it bigger. Uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem at all, but be cognizant of it. If your arm doesn't fit, neither does mine. And if you guys haven't noticed, I've actually gone and fused the entire backpack together. It is one solid part. And hopefully I can lift, oh, look at that. You got a nice little handle right there. It's one solid part. This thing looks, this thing looks so cool. <laughs> so I've gone and fused a lot of it together. Um, some of my welds aren't the best. I let this natural seam line just stay and then I've done my best to cover this up. Um, I wish I had done more, uh, spent more time slicing it in just a little bit of a different way. There are some gaps I'm gonna need to fill in, but it's really not the end of the world. I can attribute a lot of these gaps and seams to the actual natural lines of the suit. If you look at some uh, reference pictures of Starboost that are online, this back all in here is missing a lot of detail actually. So I'm probably gonna go and add a lot of that and uh, we'll see how that goes. I've also actually started cutting out the boosters very crappily um, to start getting some lights in there. I still gotta cut that one out. I gotta cut these side ones out um, and I'm gonna add some lights. But the back also closes up very, very nicely. I'm, I'm happy with how everything fits. I'm actually really surprised with how well um, all this fits, this armor, this all met up perfectly right here. Uh, it's actually, oh, there it goes. Here goes my duct tape. 
Oh no. Yeah, hey, whatever. We'll live. I gotta take this part anyway. So I'm excited about this. This is the first time I've assembled everything like this. Like straight up, got ready for this video, put this all together, and uh, seeing it together like this is, is actually getting me pretty excited to uh, finish this. I just, I have some other priorities that I need to worry about, which I'm sure some, a lot of you can understand. So that's Starboost's body and uh, it, yeah, it looks good. Um, you, I'm gonna have to get creative on how I'm gonna wear this thing. I think, I have some ideas. Well, uh, hopefully, hopefully next update video, everything will be printed and maybe I'll have this kind of fit but I'm already being so much more cognizant of fitting this thing, having learned so much from the Mark 85, I have a very good path forward for all of this. Now, I wanna talk about the arm. I got a nice little, little table here. So this is all taped together and you can kind of see just how weird the arm is, especially that inner joint area. Um, it's just kind of an odd design, uh, getting it all to, it, nothing actually fits together. So my goal is to make the arm exactly like this, one solid, one solid uh, kind of contraption where I can just slide my arm in and it's all one piece with a joint on my arm. We'll see how that goes. Uh, there's a there's still a lot to be had, a lot to be you know taken care of. Uh, Do3D did release the missing textures from this for, the forearm, the missing texture that was supposed to go down here. Um, so you guys can download that. I haven't had a chance to look at it too much, but uh, that is on the website, so you guys can go grab that. My ultimate goal is to actually cut up this it, the uh, the inner elbow cover and make almost like elastic bands or hinges where you don't need to see the inside. The back of this in there, it's all hidden. You, you're never gonna see in there. So I'm gonna let the back of the elbow do what it's supposed to and be the cover. And then I'm gonna chop this up a lot and actually have some nice hinged joint systems in there. Not too dissimilar to how I'm doing the neck on my Mark 85. And if you guys can see, I have an elastic band here and this is all stretchy elastic. And what it's allowing me to do is actually have the neck flex a little bit and this is solid, this is all solid PLA, but I'm gonna do something very similar to this where the arm can bend and I can use it to kind of flex and move my arms without being too restricted. I printed the feet or most of the feet. So the shoes come in uh, two to three different parts. They come in these top covers and then there's a part you print for the back right here and a part you print from the front. I was having some bad stringing, I don't wanna talk about it. Um, and then there's some detail, there's some rings that go around for like the details and stuff. I kind of had an idea not to print those and I'm probably gonna make this fit over a shoe because it covers just enough. If I got a nice black boot, I could fit the boot in this and it would just kind of look like a space boot. Um, so I'm gonna mess around with that before I actually print the rest of it. But I think this could be literally just a very nice shoe cover and then I'd, you'd see the rubber sole kind of sticking around the side and I don't know how bad that would be. So I'm gonna experiment with that. Yeah, this was, this was some real bad stringing. And I also broke the front of this when I was removing supports. So I'm gonna need to uh, reinforce that. It was just because the way it was, it was a top layer and uh, that won't be hard to fix. I also got the cod piece printed. It's a little small. I might have to, it like sticks out farther than it needs to. So I might just, once I get the butt plate printed, I might fuse them together and then heat them up and mold them and mesh them. Um, but it did print pretty nicely. Uh, there's a lot of gaps in the waist area because of just how this suit's designed. It's not a combat suit. It's not meant to be armored all over the place. You will see your thighs in here. Again, a black morph suit or a lycra suit will cover this up, but it should give me a lot more range of motion than walking in that damn thing, but whatever. I also have the knees printed, uh, the upper and lower knees, and I've never actually lined these up together. That looks pretty cool. Um, I, have a, I have some ideas on how I want the knee action to work and when I walk, I, I don't think I'm gonna fuse these together. I have a few ideas with like hinges and stuff to at least make these kind of rock back and be able to walk a little bit. I think it'll be pretty cool. And then I have the hands printed. Uh, these are the hinged hands. Uh, these are the bigger ones that I said I was going to print and uh, I, I'm, I'm excited to work with these. Since I'm going Arduino and programming with this whole suit, I'll have to worry less about finger controls and I might actually look into some type of uh, voice controls or motion controls. Um, it, it's gonna be pretty fun to experiment with this. It's gonna be the, the dead opposite of the Mark 85 where this is an all analog system. Um, and you can see my cool little patriotic helmet. That's a new helmet for the suit. Don't worry about what that is. So I, I'm kind of, I'm experimenting with, you know, I don't, I, don't need, I don't need to have the best range of motion with the hand. Oops, but I do have good room in these, enough for an arc reactor. Um, maybe a couple finger controls, but I'm trying to avoid that. And then I also printed the hand toppers. So these are gonna these are gonna look pretty cool. I'm excited about these. Um, again, like I talked to him about the last one, one of those hexagons probably does pop off because these are just manifolds and meshes dropped on top of each other. 
But I think that kind of does it guys for this update. I know it wasn't long. I know a lot of you were probably expecting a little bit more, but I have to focus my priorities where they lay. And right now it's Mark 85. Uh, like I said, I am going to continue printing the thighs and the shins. Um, the thighs and the shins are very weird. They, the way they cut them up and it's, it, it's just because it's such, they're tall. It's a lot of hexagons. So print orientation is going to be really tricky and it doesn't make me feel comfortable with how much support I'm going to need to waste on the thighs. Uh, so I feel like both thighs and shins are going to use just as much material as everything I've printed so far, which is a lot. So I'll, I should have those printed by the next update video and hopefully I'll have some things strapped and fitted and a couple of the little problems kind of sorted out. So thank you for staying patient and supporting all this. I, I want to I want to run into these problems before you guys do. That's kind of the point of this, so I can kind of help you guys out. Um, and I, I've ran into a couple, and hopefully it's answered some, some of you guys' questions. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. Uh, but I imagine if you found this video, you probably are. Check out a bunch of my cosplay tutorials and 3D printing tutorials that can help you guys print this, print orientation and sanding and smoothing and painting and all that. So I have a lot more coming out. So thank you for being patient. If you guys need more information about 3D printing, cosplay, all of that, join the Discord because it is awesome. Uh, there's a link down below, obviously, and it's just a absolute wealth of information. It just, pr uh, people who've been printing years longer than me, brand new people who are just, you know, making all these new innovations and stuff. It's a great place to talk and talk shop about cosplay, 3D printing. Even if you've never done any of that and you somehow stumble upon this video because you like the Mark 39 and you wanna make your first cosplay suit, Go there, join. It's free. Everybody's, it's an absolutely great community. My moderators are really holding it down. So thank you guys if you are an MVP or moderator. Uh, if you guys want to continue to support these videos in an even cooler way, uh, check out my Patreon. There's a link for it down below. That's all I'll say about that. It would really mean a lot though. And it's been helping me do a lot of cool little projects for my MVPs and patrons on the Discord. If I'm holding something in my hands, I am playing with it. You guys have probably already noticed that by now. So thank you so much for everything. Thanks for watching and have a good day.